Okay, we are live now. Hi, good evening, everyone. Okay, we are going to begin in the next one minute. All right, I'll be introducing our coach tonight. Okay, our coach is Coach Chijioke Otipa. I hope I pronounce it well. Is a certified life coach. It's a privilege having him tonight. He's an accredited international speaker, instructor, a seasoned writer, a great mentor to many as well. And he's a certified psychotherapist. He's a renowned, multi-passionate who doesn't believe that God created him to do only one thing but to explore and explode for greater impact and influence he is actually unashamable has many diverse experience and tonight i believe we will be blessed by his uh, mentorship and his lessons to teach us so please let's all sit back and listen if you have any question to ask, you can type on the comment box. And I believe he's going to do justice to tonight's uh, class and lecture. So, Coach UK, the floor is all yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, this is this is going to be an outstanding session. We are here to have fun. You know, we are here to have fun. Forget the whole. Uh, uh, the, the, the corporates, everything, just drop it for now. We are here to have fun. We are here to enjoy ourselves and we are here to learn. Okay. And I want you to, I want you to follow up in the comment section. Okay. Just drop a comment if you're watching live. Anytime you come in, whether you're watching this as a replay or you're watching it live. But I believe for those who are here now, it's live, right? We are seeing ourselves, even though I'm not seeing you, but you are seeing my, 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 my small head. Now, this is going to be a very, you know, straight to the point session. And I want you to get the most that you can from it. Okay. So one of the quick things that you will do for me is to just copy the link and put it out. Copy the link and share it out. You know, share it with your friends, share it with your family members, share it with your mentees, your, your, your siblings, anybody, anybody that you want to be here tonight. Because what I'm about to do is I'm going to, first of all, make you angry. I know I said we are here to have fun, but you get angry first because for you to actually get where you desire to be in life, I mean, if you really have a desire that is worthwhile, if you really have a desire that is big, very big, for you to get there to that your expected desire, you need a certain level of anger. You need a certain level of anger. I'm not talking about the kind of anger that is bad, <laughs> you know. But you need to get angry with the current status. You need to get angry with status quo. You need to get angry with, with average, with, with normal. If you are too satisfied with where you are right now, you will never be tempted to grow by any means. Okay? Now, I will start this session tonight because there are basically two things I'm going to be discussing. Number one is wealth creation, financial intelligence. Number two is capacity building. But I'll start with that number two. Before I start, I want you to understand something. I want to share something. I want to communicate something. One of the reasons you have to be wealthy, one of the reasons you must reject poverty, one of the reasons you must understand that poverty is not for you, 
by any chance, by any means, is this scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 15. 15 to 16. The, the writer of this, this, this verse was telling a story. He said, let me tell you a story about a certain man who saved a city with his wisdom. But that people, how did they even put it again? People did not listen to him because he was poor, something like that. Then the next, the, the later part of it, wisdom is better than strength. But a poor man is, how did he, ah? So, sorry, wisdom is better than strength. But the wisdom of a poor man is despised, yes. And his voice is not heard. Exactly. Wisdom is better than strength, agreed. But the wisdom of a poor man is despised and his, his voice is not heard. That means, no matter how wise you are, if you do not command a certain level of influence by the wealth, wealth that you are able to create, your vo you will be talking, <laughs> but people will not hear you. You can be opening your mouth and closing. You say, hey, what's happening in this country? Everybody is that. You would, that's why a lot of, see, <laughs> that's why it seems like the voice of the masses don't even matter because the system has succeeded in keeping the masses poor. So their voices, really are just sounds their wisdom is summarized into sound a collection of sounds <laughs> okay so it, you you do not want to be in that situation where your voice is not heeded your instructions are not heeded because you are poor you don't want to come to that point where your wisdom is despised. You know what despised means? It means that people would rather hit, I mean, they would rather scrub their head on a barbed wire than listen to the instruction coming from you. Because you are not wealthy, because you are poor. Okay? You don't want to be in that scenario. The truth of the matter is, it is not God's will for us to be poor. I've never seen anywhere in scripture that said, oh, God created, created us and, you know, has advised us, all of us, to be poor and broke. And we cannot even afford what we want. You have to come to a point where you get tired of that kind of life. Come on. You have to get to a point where you get tired of the anxiety, the fear, the pain that comes with not having what you need and not having what you want. Not having what you want, I understand. I mean, life is in stages, right? But when it comes to need, what not having what you need, then there's a problem. You need shelter, you need food, you need some basic amenities, you need light, you need water, you need some things. But a lot of people cannot even afford what they need right now, in a time like this. A lot of ladies, even Christian ladies, are not able to afford sanitary products there's no way you will explain to me that that is god's will i'm talking about tongue talking spirit filled demon casting believers not being able to afford not their wants but their needs don't you think that this is one of devil's strategies to actually keep people on the ground is one of his strategies to keep you at a point where it will be easier for you to compromise even as a christian that they say oh uh, bring this small bribe so that we can give you this job because you've hunted for job for so long this there's almost no alternative there's nothing and because you are not seeing escape routes because you are not seeing opportunities because you are not seeing doors and windows in other legitimate places, the only thing that is in your mind will become compromise. And you'll be tempted to compromise. Are we following tonight? 
are we following and is it making sense i'd like i'd like to, to get your feedback i'd love to get feedback from from you if you are following and remember i said you can share this it's getting more interesting it's going to get more interesting i said you can share this you know share with your friends with your family members the link that you saw that made you join this call you can just pause for a minute or 30 seconds and just join send it quickly to them and say join this this session is going on and i really love you to be here because these are fundamental truths that we all need to know as believers we all need to know as christians we all need to know as as human beings very very important so what i'm going to be doing tonight is dissecting the topic capacity building and financial intelligence what is the meaning of capacity building what's the meaning of capacity building this is simply you enlarging your course we are talking about personal and professional development here enlarging your course there are so many things that you desire there are so many things you dream you dream about there are so many things you pray for but if you do not expand your capacity, if you do not enlarge your coast, you may not be able to receive that. And even if you receive it by chance, by mistake, by favor, by grace, by any means, if you receive that thing, you are going to bump it, you are going to crash it, you are going to mess it up. Why? Capacity. You don't pour old, I mean, you don't pour new wine in old wine skin. Remember the story of the woman of Zarephat. Imagine she could not get extra vessels just imagine and such a kairos opportunity came and she couldn't grab it that would be one of the most painful things to happen to a man that because of the capacity you are your current existing capacity you are not able to receive what is coming to you as a benefit you are not able to enter doors that you were meant to be I mean, to penetrate. You are not able to receive opportunities and deliver in those opportunities because, simply because, you are not ready. You still have a limited capacity. Imagine that you are in, I mean, in the presence of, let's say, the Minister of Petroleum, right? <laughs> and he just asks you, we are coming to your house in the next two hours or in the next one hour or in the next 30 minutes <laughs> you know we are doing free fuel supply for random people so we are coming to your house and then all of a sudden next thing they're in your house already and they're like okay so we are going to be here for for uh for 30 seconds bring your largest jar let's fill it with fuel just imagine that kind of experience. And all you have as your largest jar is maybe one small keg, one small four liter keg or five liters keg. It's going to be very painful. Trust me, it's going to be painful. It is. Welcome, Favor Yakubo. I see some people are joining now. That's amazing. Welcome. <laughs> so remember the story of whose story again do I, did I want to? um share okay yes when the, the wedding at canaan when mary came to jesus and said that these the people in this wedding jesus these people need wine wine don't finish hmm? my son wine don't finish Jesus, after doing, you know, after saying what he said, uh, you know, my time has not yet come and all that. His mother went to the to the men serving at the ceremony. Eh? And he, she said to them, whatever he asks you to do, do it. Now, they had to go and fill certain kegs with water, right? Now, what if those kegs were not available? What if it was only just one keg? That was there i'm trying to paint a picture for you so that this thing will be easy for you to comprehend i'm trying to create a picture for us in our minds and that picture i'm painting is the picture of capacity building why you need to expand why you need to build yourself why you need to make yourself that new wine skin that can contain new wine why you need to prepare yourself for even opportunities you've not seen 
Now imagine one day they call you for an event. They say, oh, we need, we have 10,000 youths gathered and we are looking for somebody to come and speak to them. Is this something you can do? Do you know that such an opportunity can transform your life forever? But because you are not really prepared for it, because that public speaking, they've been telling you to learn, you refuse to learn it. You refuse to get good at it. Now, this opportunity has come, but you will run away from it because you are not prepared. I'm telling you, oh, there's a grant available. Can you, I mean, are you doing anything? Have you registered your business? You can drop a proposal and then we'll help you. You, you have no idea what to, you, do, you don't even have a business idea to start with. You don't know how to pitch. You don't have what to pitch. You've uh, nothing. That's why sometimes it drives me crazy when I see people, believers who are praying for wealth, who are praying for money. God bless me. God, miracle money land upon my head. Eh? My destiny help us locate me. Meanwhile, <laughs> I have a problem with such prayers anyways, but that's not the topic for tonight. Because I keep wondering, why don't you see yourself as somebody else's destiny helper? Why must you be the one that needs to be destiny helped? All the time you are praying for destiny helpers. Have you ever prayed, God, give me insight to become dest a destiny helper to millions of other people? Don't you think that went too well to start coming? Okay, so I have a problem when people pray for money, pray for wealth, pray for whatever. And at the end of the day, they don't have anything doing. I saw a scripture that really impressed. Will I call it impressed? It really did something to me. I saw that scripture. And that is 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 10. Towards the end of that verse 10, it says, if anyone is not willing to walk, let him not eat. We all know that there's a principle that God has set for us. I will bless the works of your hands. If God now comes to bless the works of your hands and he opens your hands and he doesn't see any work, what is he going to bless? Empty air. I mean, what's he going to bless? Okay, so these things are important. That's why I'm driving this topic. That's why I'm digging deep on this. It is very important for you to build yourself. It is very important for you to escape the system that has held, held you captive. As much as hope is good, hope is not a strategy. Hoping that one day everything is just, is just going to turn out fine. Hoping that one day one mysterious millions will just appear in your account. It, it's not the way the, the world works. No. Mm -mm. What are you building? What are you doing that you can predict? Welcome, 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 welcome. Good evening, is it you? Alex, Rita, Favor, Engineer, Elisha, Kezi, love it. Good to see you all here. Good to see you all here. It's a pleasure. So uh, keep giving me feedback. Keep giving, keep giving me feedback, okay? I, I see you, Favor, from Kuba. Wonderful, wonderful. So you should be thinking, what do I have capacity for? What can I do by myself? What am I building that is sustainable? By once you be once you get to age of reason, once you are able to reason, you are able to read, write, understand, communicate, right? You should be thinking of what you can do for yourself. You should be thinking of what you can set up that would empower a lot of other people. Systems you can build that would favor you, that you can be in control of. Okay, so it's very important. You, you have to denounce the life of slavery. You see this life of, let me, let me paint the picture that a lot of people have embraced. And by, by the authority in the name of Jesus, that, 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 that stronghold, we are going to destroy it tonight. I'm serious. You see this picture of, they give that to you, you grow up, you go to primary school, secondary school, so you go to school, school, hmm? you go to the university, right? You come out. When you come out, the next thing is what? Go and start looking for a job. Come on, go and start looking for a job. Everybody, this person has a job, this person has a job, this person has a this or that. You know, probably the career, you didn't even choose it by yourself. Your parents chose it. And then by the time you are done, you get the job. You are probably underpaid. Job that you probably even lobbied for, right? You get underpaid 
and underemployed. That means you do not enjoy working there, obviously, but you have to do it because you need to survive, right? And by the time you are, you know, maybe a few weeks, or a few months, or a few years into the job, next thing is everybody singing into your ears, go and get married. Once you have small money in your account and you think you can do small something on top of somebody's head, go and marry. Once you have small money, you think you can combine with a man and, you know, marry. And the next thing is marriage. You get married. I'm not saying it's bad. You get married. The next thing is, ah, when are you going to have children? You have children. And life just continues like that. The next thing is, before you know what's happening, you are old. Lived for nothing really meaningful. Just give birth to some children and that's all. That's all. Next thing, you are fighting for your pension. <laughs> and you have to lobby to get your pension. You are probably going to eventually enjoy your retirement benefits with shaky, painful knees. When you basically cannot enjoy anything about life. When the doctors are now telling you, you can't eat red meat, you cannot take ice cream, you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that. That's when some, you know, little money will eventually come. It's little, it's obvious, it's too little. But that's not the concept I want you to embrace tonight. I want you to start thinking from another perspective, another angle entirely, an angle of abundance, an angle that says, what can I do for my generation? Let me tell you one secret. If you want to be wealthy, expand your, the carrying capacity of your mind. Expand it, stretch it. Having a powerful vision is one of the things that would help you to make wealth. Why? Your brain and your mind, they are not able to differentiate the visioner from the visioneers. If you have a vision to help 10,000 young women, or let me not say 10,000, you want to help millions of young people or millions of women, if you have not that kind of vision or ambition, your, your mind is not going to be able to differentiate it from you. Now, instead of survival mode for one person, you are going to be thinking about thriving for a large population of people. So the money clock in your head is going, man, you need money. You need to make money because this school you want to build is not going to run on empty. This brand you want to launch, it's not going to fund itself. I hope you are getting me. Are, you, are we following me tonight? Okay. So everything in you is going to be telling you, man, we need to work harder. We need to work harder. We need to find and assess more opportunities. We need to break into more circles. Okay. So good. Now, one of the very first things that you have to understand about wealth creation, about money, about, you know, Zazu, which, what will I call it again? Ego, Kudi, Owo, Apalapala, eh? <laughs> One thing you have to understand is this. There are two things. Three things, three. I usually would teach six of these things. Yeah, six or seven of these, but I'll restrict it to three because of time. Maybe with time, when we have uh, physical sessions and, you know, all that, I'll be able to dish out more of this but let me just do three okay number one is clarity sorry number one is mindset of which i've already started talking about number two is clarity and number three is, is strategy mindset clarity and strategy what do i mean by mindset your mind has to be in the game Let me see. Pardon me. So I'm trying to see if this is going to give me a better audio quality because I need to lean back. So if you, if you stop hearing me, <laughs> let me know. Or if you can hear me better, also let me know in the comment section. Okay? Now, Um, Sabaya, if you're here, you can help me confirm whether the audio quality is good, if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. 
Okay, I believe that's a yes because I, I couldn't. This thing is plugged in, but whichever way, whichever way. Now, your mind has to be expanded. Your mind needs help. Your mind needs to be washed. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sabayo. Your mind needs to be washed. It needs to be purged from diverse experiences. A lot of things you know about money, they are wrong. A lot of things you know about wealth creation are wrong. You did not receive the right knowledge about wealth. And that's why a lot of us are struggling. From concept conception, from, I mean, not conception, from delivery. Hmm? You were probably received by poor people. When I attended an event, I listened to, you know, the speaker. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I listened to the speaker and he said some things that really blew my mind. He said that when you were born, who received you? Who was the midwife that ushered you into the world? That person was probably poor, struggling with their salary, angry and bitter, frustrated. Even at some point, you may realize that the person who bought, the people who nurtured you, your parents were not really so well to do. So you, you were born in the midst of strife. Most of the time, I'm not saying that that's your case. I'm just saying for many people, right? In the midst of strife and lack. And those things, they had some imprints on your mind. Even as a child, your subconscious acquired some things about wealth. You are growing up, you went to a school. And in that school, you were surrounded by poor people. You, you were probably taught by a poor teacher. Went to university and you met poor lecturers. I mean... Everything around you, the neighborhood, everything smells of poverty. And for you to be able to come out of this, you need to conquer the mind war. You need to conquer it at the level of your mind. Okay? You need to step out of that position from your mind. This is not my identity. This is not who I am. I can do better. I can make more. I can... I can build and grow. I, I, I can become more than this. So you may need to jump out from the system, from this bandwagon mentality, this salary slavery mentality. Somebody is saying, you know, that 100K is big money for salary. I mean, it, it, it's, it's funny. With what is going on now, a lot of people, the, the, their wealth or money clock has been totally damaged by past experiences. The salary they paid your mother and your father put a scale over your head. It puts a scale over your eyes in the sense that if they pay you slightly higher, you will be happy. If they, they are paying you slightly higher than what they are paying your friend in church, your friends, your group of friends, you will be happy because you feel you are doing well. So you see somebody who is earning 200k a salary and just is jumping up and down, you know. If that's the only thing you have to hold on to, if that's the only thing you are, you, are, you are grabbing, just know that you are not too far from poverty. Because how many things can you buy without that money finishing? Okay? So you have to be ready to rid yourself of every past painful experiences you've had with, with money. The trauma you've had with money going to ask your parents for money and they're telling you money does not go on trees every time you are disturbing me you think money does this you think money does that it, it harmed your mind your subconscious received a dent being chased out of school because you cannot afford your parents could not afford school fees it dented your mind so when you start coming out from this is when you make the conscious decision and effort to step out of that, that dent, to start repairing. Okay? Now, money mates are things you need to destroy. Mates, M-Y-T-H-S. You know, things you've previously believed about money that are not true. Sometimes we heap our ignorance with superstitious beliefs. We heap our ignorance, we hide our ignorance with religion 
and pseudo spirituality in the sense that you see people who will tell you eh, 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 that if god is giving you money i mean if the money if the money is from god it has to come slow slow i mean i don't know if you've heard something like that there are a lot of people who believe that you know if the money is righteous money it has to come slow slow you you have to work for many years then when you are old the benefits will now come in form of pension and gratuity no that's not true that's that's absolute absolute not it's not it's, it's not true i can tell you for a, for a fact i have friends who are young and they are millionaires i have friends who when we talk we talk about our retirement i mean what will you what are you planning to do when you retire i have friends who are planning to retire young and rich that's 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 the i mean that's the goal so re retire and be happy serving the lord you are no longer interested in working for anybody in fact you you don't even want to do active work but you know that you've amassed enough wealth that will last you a lifetime is it possible yes yes so there are so many other myths you you have to now determine what have i believed about money that is keeping me back for some people they do not see any possibility of making money apart from salary that's another danger month end money that's all they are looking for you i've met people that no matter how much i tell them about wealth creation no matter how much i tell them about the opportunities that they have i meet some people and i tell them you speak well do you know you can go into podcasting and public speaking do you know you can monetize this or that oh i think you have a, a lot of knowledge do you know you can write a book and all they are like oh ah, all these things asha me i just know i need a job god will give me a job in jesus name i mean the job that i'm praying for is coming if i am able to get a job that they pay me like 200k to 300k you know well you know this system is bad this one you have to lobby complain 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 everywhere but until you come to realize that you can create something that you are in control of you can create something that is in your name and it rewards you it's profitable it's solving people's problems and it is something you enjoy doing until you realize that you may never break free from that salary mentality never don't run the rat race if you must be an entrepreneur sorry if you must be an employee be an employee preneur be a game changer in your workplace be so relevant that nobody can ignore you be so relevant that they will be begging you for i mean let please let us promote you come bringing value to your team to your organization to whoever you're working for come bringing value and to that value add an ability to negotiate your value or negotiate your reward you will not be like the ordinary person who is just there to let's be doing it and uh, you know once it's four o'clock we'll go home that's all no no okay so what are the other things mediocrity mediocrity let's just be average let me tell you one funny thing about this mind and how we use spirituality to mask our foolishness and mediocrity and a dose of in fact i don't know what to call it but it's, it's too much now when i was younger when i was smaller growing up you know i i got to a point and i felt like man it's going to be hard because of what i had believed about money that the children of rich people are usually reward who told us that lie those lies were told by adults who didn't want us to see them as incompetent because they don't have money so they framed up those poor adults framed up the story that children of rich people are wayward have you seen tony elumelu's children are they wayward is any one of them wayward mm -mm. <laughs> no it's poor people that make up those stories 
So I told myself that because I don't want my children to be wayward and because I don't want to miss heaven, you know, I don't want to, and I just don't want to, that money is a distraction, money is not good. No, money is neither good nor bad. Money only reveals the career. When you have money to reveal your true identity, it will reveal what's inside you. All the things that you want to build that requires money, when you have a lot of money, you'll be able to build them. All the things you want to accomplish that requires money, when you have enough money, you can fund those things. So money is neither white nor black. It depends on whose hands it's inside. So I told myself, I don't want money. I mean, I, I want to be, uh, I, I just want to be comfortable. This is one lie a lot of people tell themselves. I just want to be comfortable. Maybe marry somebody who is already doing well and all of us, we can just be managing. This life is about managing. We manage one thing on the other. We'll just be going like that. <laughs> I love this. I cannot, I cannot skip this. <laughs> Thank you, Favor. Thank you very much, Favo. So please, if you are if you are getting this, if you are getting this, if you are getting the vibe, if you are getting something from here, just keep dropping it in the comment section. Keep dropping something in the comment section. I would love to see it. And don't forget, keep sharing. If it's making sense, keep sharing. Keep sharing to your with your friends, your family members. You know, drop bars, drop punchlines in the comment section. I'll put them up to the screen because I would like other people to see it when they're watching this video. So, <laughs> so thank you very much for that. So I told God, dear Lord. Don't allow me to be rich. Ah, Jesus. God is merciful, though. <laughs> God is very merciful. Do you know that there are some prayers you are praying today? If God answers that prayer, you are in trouble. He? Say, God, don't allow me to. Let me not be rich. Because rich money brings trouble. People, when they have money, they will lose their peace of mind. Who told you? That philosophy, that principle, that when you have money, you use your peace of mind, it's poor people that made that law. It's poor people that made the law. Money uh, uh, cannot buy happiness. Tell me what poverty can buy. Tell me what poverty can buy, if not sorrows and pain. So we've used all these things to mask ourselves. Some people even think it's in scripture. Some people, if you ask them now, they'll tell you it's in, it's in the Bible that money cannot buy happiness. It's not true. Money can buy you accommodation and take you out of the streets. Money can save you from embarrassment. Money will buy you food. You eat the food and you will be happy. Eventually, if you solve the math, you see that one way or the other, one, one of them is helping the other. Are you getting where I'm going tonight? <laughs> so after praying that, God, please don't make me rich. Don't make me too rich. Just make me comfortable so that I can just have fun with me and my small family. My small nuclear family and maybe my extended family is small. Just make me comfortable. Let me tell you, somebody told me something recently. My friend is a medical doctor. He told me that the middle class in Nigeria has been eliminated. You are either in the upper class or in the lower class. <laughs> you are either rich or poor. <laughs> there's, there's no in between. You know? So there's no average. Yes, you are saying, eh, you are just managing. If you want to buy a shoe and you buy the shoe and start pressing calculator, you are poor. This is not an insult. You know, you have to understand where you are. Know where you are right now so that you can start working on yourself. If you buy bread and start complaining, if you enter bike and start dragging remaining 15 naira change with the bike man, if you, you know, you want to buy food, you are complaining, ah, this one, this one, hey, remove 20 naira for me now, remove 30 naira for me. If you're always complaining that things are hard, then things are hard for you. And it's not that it's a bad thing. It's only a sign that, man, you need to look up. We need to, I'm going higher. Yes, I am. Hey, hey. We need to go higher. That's where we need to go. Hmm? So, good evening, light. Good evening. Good evening, light. Good to see you here. So now, I prayed that prayer. But thank God, God did not answer me. Yay! He did not answer me. <laughs> thank God. 
Exactly. E exactly. Thank you. We prayed, God, don't make me read so I don't sin against you. Then you now found out that poor people even sin more. Poverty will drive you into compromise. You spiritual sister that does not have a place to stay meets other spiritual brethren. They tell her that, hey, look, oh, me, I can only fend for myself. I don't even have money. We, we prayed that, you know, we were hoping that when we grow up, we'll help the poor. Now it's like we are the poor. So <laughs> we too, we need help. So please go and find somewhere else. I'm unavailable. Now that Christian firebrand Holy Ghost field sister will go and meet one Yahoo boy by mistake. She's sitting somewhere crying. The Yahoo boy will now meet her. Ah, what's up, babe? What's up? How are you doing? This, 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 this. Uh, this is what happened. I cannot. They open up in that vulnerable state. They open up, and the Yahoo boy now says, "Eh, I have a room. Oh, I have three bedroom flats, and I'm the only one staying now as a big boy. You know, I need to be in different rooms to run my my parole. So, uh, I mean, one of the rooms you can come and stay. Don't worry, just come and stay. Firebrand sister, at this point." You, you think logic is taking place. You think it's logic. The, the seat of logic has been destroyed by poverty. They are in survival mode. When you are in survival mode, you don't really think straight. When they say bring bribe, you bring. When they say bring this one, you bring. When they say lobby, you lobby. Because you, are, you, you need to survive. That's what we need to understand. We need to make options for ourselves. So that compromise does not become an option. So the Christian sister now goes to stay there. And next thing you are hearing, she's pregnant and the church is judging her, you know, canceling her in the church. And I mean, I mean, cancel culture, throwing her out of church and church and, you know, asking people not to contact her or anything, you know, so much judgment. But how did this start? The same poverty that you thought that if you are poor, you will, do, you will be more righteous. So. Good. Now let's go to the next one. Um. You, you can never acquire anything you demonize. So if you think mo money is bad, you won't make money. If you think money is bad, you'll be poor. Simple and short. Anything you demonize, you will never acquire. Never. If you think wealth is bad, if you think living a comfortable life is bad, if you think entering boat is a sin, <laughs> your hip bone will break inside along. Yeah? Inside that, that along you are entering. Your hip, it will it, sometimes sometimes after entering that those their vehicles, my one leg will seize, it will get numb. I'm like, God, I beg. We, we <laughs> you know, it's good for you to experience all these things so that you know what you need to get out of, so that you understand that luxury is not a sin. Luxury is not bad, luxury is sweet, comfort is sweet. Comfort is very sweet. It's not bad. <laughs> so good. Now, the next thing is clarity. And I'll, I'll just create a, a picture for you on this one. Clarity. That's the next thing. Before I talk about stra strategy, I'll leave strategy for another time. I'll leave that one for another time. But let me talk about clarity. And then we'll talk about financial intelligence. I'm going to list a few tips that would help you stay financially safe. And financially competent this period even in this period i know things are hard but there are some things that you can do there are some things that you can do that will set you apart from the masses yeah you see no matter what you want to be don't be the masses poor masses yeah you see the masses are suffering and you are among hey you get us to be now a whole child of god we are seated with Christ in, in heavenly places. So that are both principalities and power. But you are poor. <laughs> you know gel. It's not gelling. It's not making sense. Hmm? My God will supply all my needs according to his, his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Riches did deal, but it's like the experience is not experiencing. <laughs> it, it's, not, it's not making sense. I don't know if you get it. It's not just making sense. You can't be on survival. You can't be surviving. Some people will be saying, eh, I, I, 
I don't even know where tomorrow's food will come from, but it will shall come. I don't know where this will come from, but it will come. And we applaud such things. We, we celebrate it. You know? Somebody will say, yes, I, I, I've been suffering for the past one week. No food, nothing, nothing. And somebody just sent me, called me and sent me 30K. Good, though. We celebrate it. Praise the Lord. But what are you doing to get out of that condition? I don't believe in giving people palliative. You see? It's good. It's not bad. But when you come to keep giving palliative, 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 and you're not empowering them, you're not changing them at the mind level, they become dependent and entitled folks, and they will remain poor forever because they know help is coming soon. That's why a lot of beggars will never leave the streets. They're not doing anything with their hands. So they just beg, and they know they're going to get something. And the same thing is happening in church. You get people, you give them small chops. You give them, I mean, small... Uh, food or something, gary, rice, give them, and they eat, and they're happy, and they go. They know that somehow, somehow, something's going to come. How about gathering these people by fire, by force? You must learn a skill. You must learn a trade. You must become an entrepreneur. You must learn how to sell. Okay? Emmanuel or Ladijo, you can't, that's can't, you can't actualize or you can't attain or you can't achieve or you can't obtain. You cannot. Good. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love that. So, that's where we're going. Clarity is very important. I want you to know where you are going. I want you to, to have that clear vision. That sense of purpose. That is what I want to do in my life. I don't just want to be running around doing random things. I don't want to be running around applying for any job I see. I don't want to be just jumping from pillar to post, begging people for help. Hey, this is my CV, this is my... Some of you have submitted CV like 20 times. Still jobless. I, had, I read a story of somebody who um, studied in, I, I, is it a medical course. After seven years, no job. And she's still applying for a job after seven years. It, this is paining me especially. You know why? Why is because even after secondary school, after primary school, do you know as a young person, you can acquire skills. You can acquire some skills and become a freelancer, offering the same skills as services to people who are living abroad. And they're paying you in hundreds of dollars. In a short while, you'll be a king in Nigeria. You are not paying tax in their country. You are not buying things in their own rates. You are spending here at home. Our minds are not open to such opportunities. And that is why all we are thinking about is, let me get a job. May God help me. You are carrying CV up and down inside church, carrying your file everywhere in church. Every time you are raising file, you are praying, rubbing anointing oil on your CV that will eventually get shredded because that's the truth. When you carry anointing oil and plaster your CV and go and submit it, it's going to end in the dustbin. Is a pastor that told me this one. A pastor that told me that he, anytime he's doing an interview or he's reviewing for his organization, if he sees any an anointing oil stamp on your CV, shred that street. We cannot downplay strategy and replace it with spiritism or some, some fetish, fetish. Okay? So, Good. Are we following right now? Are we following? Clarity is very important. What do I want to do in my life? What do I want to do in my life? And you have to be able to ask this question. Find out. Put these things together. Passion, purpose, profit, Proficiency. There are others. There are many others. I have about 12 of them. But I'll just decide to keep this four for the purpose of this session tonight so that it doesn't stretch too long. Passion, purpose, profit, proficiency. Passion, what do you really love to do? Have you ever sat down to consider this? Yes. 
We have a lot inside of us. Have you ever sat down to consider what you love to do? Have you ever sat down to consider what you will love to do? So it's not just about, hey, there's a job in this, there's a job in this bank, there's a job here, there's, can you just do this job, can you do this job? At the end of the day, you find out the job is paying 70K or 60K in this economy. What do you really love? Is this what you will love to spend your life, your time doing? Do you have a strong sense of emotional connection with what you're doing? Passion is like fuel. Passion is like fuel that keeps your engine burning, that keeps your engine moving. What is that thing that you, know, you have a desire to do? The next one is purpose. A sense of purpose. Who are the people you want to help? What is the thing you want to help humanity do? Purpose is summarized simply into two, two things. I was reading the book of Matthew yesterday or today. When the Pharisees met Jesus and asked, what is the greatest of the law? I said the greatest is that you shall, the greatest commandment, I think, you shall love the, love, the, Lord, the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your strength. And shall the second of this is that you shall love your neighbor as yourself now this helped me to 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 give a give flesh the context of purpose purpose is simply devotion to god and service to humanity put together true devotion to god service to humanity so what are you thinking in this dimension what do you really want to do for your world? What do you want to do for the, this generation? What is it that is burning in your heart? Whenever you pass and you see young children that should have been that should be in school, young girls that should be in school, but they are parading in the streets. Is there something speaking to you from the inside that this is this is there's, there's something for you to do favor? There's work for you to do. Is there something calling you from the inside? Love it. There's something you need to do about this. There are solutions that have your names on it. There are problems, I mean, that have your names boldly written on them. It may be the education system. It may even be the church system. You're like, no, this one, we have to change something here. We have to do something about this. It may be the health sector. There's something... One of my patients today, she's a Muslim woman, but she had a, she has something she wanted to do. She told me, I feel like I have something to do in the health sector, but I don't have a health background. You know, she, she wasn't like, it was her son that I was treating. So I, after the treatment, I spent like almost additional 25 minutes <laughs> doing coaching and consulting there, <laughs> you know? What is it that you have burning in you? This problem, I must solve it. You see it and it disturbs you. Other people see it and they don't even see it. I mean, they just see it and pass. It's normal. To others, it's normal. It's, it's just status quo. That's how it has been. Oga, okay, shut up. You're complaining about the education system too much. This is how it has been since the days of our forefathers. So why do you want to come and change it? What are you changing? You see something going wrong in church. You know that there's a way this thing can be done better. But everybody say, no, come on. When did you start your ministry? Come on, don't complain. Who are you to complain? This is how the system has been. This is but there's something in you that says we can do this better. Purpose. That can be a good predictor to where you want to go, what you want to do in your life. The next one is profit. Purpose and passion, they are good. But you have there's necessity that you cannot run away from. You need to buy fuel. You need to repair something in your car. Or if you don't have car, you need to at least <laughs> buy good shoes. As per legacies, you know how we do it. You know, your Mercedes Benz. <laughs> or Legadies Benz. Huh? You need to prepare yourself. You need to eat well. Many people are not even eating up to two square meals in a day these days. They just hit 001 or 010 or 100 and they pretend like they are fasting. You are not fasting. You don't have money. If you have money, you eat well. <laughs> not fasting. And how you know you are not fasting is that you will not be praying. You just be, <laughs> you just be, if you are fasting, you are not praying. You are starving. <laughs> you don't have money. 
Eh, but don't feel bad. <laughs> so good. Now, now the next one is proficiency. I said something one time about profit. The last point I mentioned: passion without profit is poison, or it can be poison sometimes. So you need to consider profit. You need to consider what's the amount of money I can make from this profit potentiation. Sit down, think about your this, uh, your salary and what you can earn in the next five years. Put it together. Look at the other things that are within you, things that you can build. Is it writing? Is it coaching? Is it speaking? Is it consulting or mentoring? What, what is it that you know you feel it's something that you have as a gift that you can nurture? What is the potential profit that can come out from that thing? Compare your salary and find where to put your energy. We're running short of time. So I'll go to the next one. Proficiency. What can you do? What is that thing that people are telling you that you can do? They're telling you, oh, I love working with you. Don't ignore it. You know, a lot of believers, one problem I have with a lot of believers is we, we tend to, you know, do a lot of false humility. Somebody is telling you your wealth dome, your well, your well of wealth. Somebody is showing it to you. But then, oh, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't worry. You see, <laughs> Sha? I don't know. It's the grace of God. Though. Just thank God. Everybody, that's how everybody, you know, we are all like that. It's a common knowledge. No. Somebody comes to tell you, I love the way you dress. I love the way you speak. I love the way you talk. I love the way you write. You don't know that. In that, I love the way you write. There's, there are millions of dollars hidden in that statement. But when you come and start denying, they say, oh, you dress well. You don't know you can start helping people to dress better. You can start teaching people how to dress better. People like myself, hey, God of mercy. If not that my brothers helped my life, my elder brothers, if not that they helped my, they helped my life, you, you can see me on the road and deny me. Because my fashion sense is if this is if this is zero and this is ten, eh? my fashion sense is here. At least I've maybe I've gotten to like two now. I try. <laughs> you know, but you can start helping people dress better. You can start helping people look elegant on a budget. You can start you, there's so many things you can do from proficiency. Proficiency is a pointer, a pointer to your destiny what you what you can do what you want to do so you when you now want to be more efficient you can try to fix all these together and find the central theme that connects these things and then you you move are we getting value tonight are we getting value tonight ah see i've got me my legs is, legs is. I got me my Prada. <laughs> ah, wonderful. <laughs> Le Lexus. There's also Toyota. T O E Y O T E. These are these are the best brands of cars for poor people. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, what is it called? Mercedes Benz. Lexus. Toyota. Huh? Toyota. After trekking with Toyota, your big toe will be paining you. That's, <laughs> you know, that's just the, that's just the, the thing. Hmm? But by God's grace, in Jesus' name, all of us will upgrade. Hmm? We'll be driving maybe by next two, two months or three months. Something special will happen. I'll be driving V8, all of us. Hmm? <laughs> if you like, don't work. Tracking continues. <laughs> okay, so on a lighter note, actually, on a lighter note, we all need to get, you know, get more serious with life. <laughs> okay, good, good. Thank you, love it. Thank you, love it. Okay, so um, now I want to remind us of a particular scripture, and this is why we need to work hard. Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6, I think to 11 or 12. To the ants, O sluggards, consider her ways and be wise. Then not, there's one small grammar that they spoke there. Hmm? That for they have no commander or prince or so, so, and so, shall they know what to do and when to do it. And they organize themselves. That's the summary of the whole thing. And 
at the end of that that scripture that verse um verse 11 he said something a little sleep a little slumber a little folding of the arms folding of the arms to rest and poverty will come upon you like a vagabond and want like an armed man can you see why we need to work hard can you see why we need to make money i mean why we need to open our eyes to opportunities around us and actually grow it's not uh, let me let me let me just hope that things will turn out well let's just be let's just be hoping that the country will get better is the country really getting better how long have you been hoping is it not time to jump out of the moving train and do something for yourself oh let's just be when you uh, most times when I, I i have interaction with certain christians and i ask them what are you what are you doing or what do you do or what do you intend to do about the current situation of things what are you building that can make you more money or something and they're like hey, hey, hey. we're trusting god dude. we thank god we're just trusting god see eh, this thing this whole thing forget it's just god that will help nigeria once they start talking like that don't know that they don't have plan Otilo, they don't have one raw plan zero nothing no that it's not good to trust god but God is not God is not a God is not a cheat. Huh? God is a God of principles. And the principles of wealth creation are clear. Exchange. The law of exchange. You must give something to get something. You must put in something for something to come out. You must give value for somebody to exchange another form of value, which may be money. Currencies are diverse. You have to come with your own currency and somebody comes with his own or her own and you exchange. That's how to make wealth. Wealth is made through sales. If you like, shout amen, 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 fire, amen, 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 amen. A lot of people have been shouting the amen. They are still broke. Why? They are disobeying the principles of wealth. And at the end of the day, they start looking at God. Hey, God, you are not answering. You are not... The, the, what he has said in his word, what he has given about how to make wealth, what he has said, if you don't work, you will not eat. Uh, uh, I'll bless the works of your hand. P, 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 nothing. You don't hear that one. It's, you are just waiting for miracle money and uh, what is it called again? Destiny helpers to fall from somewhere. Some people are even angry with their destiny helpers that they have not seen. Because one of your uncle is rich, you think he's your destiny helper, and you are just angry with the man for nothing. Somebody that has a lot of problems to worry about. Do you know how many of his lands the government has snatched? Do you know how much money he needs at the moment to execute some project? And then you're just angry. Oh, this man is not, you know, coming to help his destiny help him. <laughs> it doesn't make sense, right? So good. Let's move over to the next thing. And this particular one, in the next 10 minutes, we are done. Okay, so I'll try to be as brief as possible. Financial intelligence. How do you make wise financial decisions? How do you stay afloat financially? How do you make more money in this economy? How do you become more competent with your finances? How do you manage wealth? First of all, you need to understand that for you to be financially intelligent, you must understand how money works, how money flows. You must understand what to do with money. So we are talking about basically acquiring the money, making the money by any means, maybe salary or um, business or sales or whatever. Retaining the money in terms of savings, right? Savings. Multiplying the money in terms of investments, right? Circulating the money in terms of impact. So you have to be able to invest in things that will bring return, returns on your investment. Your money has to be going through a system. It's not meant to be stagnated. If you want to be poor, one of the fastest ways to be poor is to just when they pay you money, you save. When they pay you money, you save out some money. Save, just save. Inflation will eat up that money. Because maybe you wanted to buy a car and you are saving for a car. <laughs> you see the car you want to buy. It's four million naira. Hmm. 
and you started from 2020 to save 4 million. In 2020, you saved up to 1 million. 2022, 2021, you saved another 1 million. That I don't even know if you are paying, <laughs> with the salary that they are paying most people, I don't know where they will get the 1 million from. Let's just assume that somebody randomly blessed them with 1 million every year. Third year, you save, you manage to save some money and make 1 million. Fourth year, that's 2024, you saved the, another 1 million. You've saved everything together. Hey? And at the end of the at the end of the day, you've gone back to go and buy that car. You found out that the car you wanted to buy is now seven million. Hmm? Seven million. And the car that uh, you found for four million is second hand and you don't even like it. Right? So you eventually have to manage that one. Probably what you required it for. That one cannot do it. You have to manage that one. Or you don't even buy the car again because other needs will eventually come. You realize you need money for other things. So what I'm trying to say in essence is this. Money has to move. Money has to be moving. If you are connected with me on WhatsApp, you must have seen that cartoon I posted about wealth. So it has to be moving. Think differently from other people. Think differently. Let me start with this one as the first thing. Poor people spend rich people invest in utility poor people spend the rich invest now this this of course this sweatshirt i got it as a gift as a birthday gift from my mentees as well as this this my picture here but that's not even what i wanted to talk about <laughs> that's not what i wanted to talk about i wanted to use this as example I wanted to use this as an example. And this, it's my, my mentee made this, this clothes. So they planned, they planned and you know, they conspired and brought the, the gifts, a lot of things for me here in Abuja during my birthday, January. Now, let's say that this clothes now, have I even forgotten what I wanted to say? Can somebody remind me? I, I've lost my, my frame of thought. My goodness. <laughs> Remember what I, I was talking about? The point I started with. I'm trying to remember. If I don't remember it, I'll just start with the next point. Anybody here with me? Anybody here with me? Can you quickly remind me the first points that I raised? So that I can go ahead with the example. Okay. Anybody? Okay, I think I'll start with the next one. When you remember it and I see it, I'll, I'll come back to it. So, so um, yes, learn how money works. Learn how money works. Learn by all means. Choose to learn, educate yourself financially. You've lost a lot of time yes you've lost a lot of waiting time but it's still never late to learn about wealth take courses read books i have ah, i wish i could almost everywhere i turn now i'll see book this book is a uh, money won't make you rich i i read uh, you know i, I read a book recently be, think like a billionaire become a billionaire these are the kind of books you find in my house how to retain keep uh make, acquire customers and keep them for life the millionaire whatever uh fast lane the millionaire fast lane these are the kind of books that i read you know and it's intentional i am deciding to reverse the cost of poverty in terms of information and ignorance fill your mind with quality information fill your mind with the right kind of wealth information Reverse everything, turn it upside down, turn it upside down. Beautiful. This is one of my next trades. Chris, you're doing I, I'm, I, I know now, I'm proud of you. This is my, this is my mentee right here. So I'm not afraid. <laughs> I'm not afraid. I'm not shocked. So maybe you are going to do 
Okay, don't worry. That one is, is on another side. I will talk with you. I will probably do a book review. Now, learn. Go ahead and learn. Take online courses, read books, take, attend, I mean, uh, subscribe to podcasts, watch YouTube videos, learn, learn, learn. Okay, yes, yes, good. I was talking about, I was talking about saving, investing, circulating money. Money is not meant to stagnate. Money is not meant to be in one place. Okay? So you get money, your mind should be going to, what can I do to increase the money I'm getting? I said something, poor people, but um, poor people spend, rich people invest in utility. That's what I, exactly, that's what I was looking for. So I said, this, this clothes now, a poor person will buy this clothes to show off. Just to show off, oh, I have a blue sweatshirt and they are using to work up and down. And they are feeling big. But a rich person would say, when I wear this, what value does it bring to my brand? Look at this, the multi-potentialite coach. Multi-potentialite coach. If I wear this and I go for an event, for example, and in that event, people are going to meet me and if one of the very first things they read is what's on my t-shirt. This brand, this brand value. This brand identity. So this is an investment. Even if I spent my money to buy this, I did not really spend. I invested. Why? There's a return that I'm expecting. That's the way you should see money. That's the way you should see spending money. If you want to buy clothes or shoe or buy car or buy this or buy that, don't think of it as is something you are spending. Think of it as an investment in utility. You are buying light. I buy my light credit and all that. You are buying fuel. Don't see it as expense. Don't so much be a consumer spender. See it as you are investing in utility so that you can have light to be productive, to do your work and earn more money. You are buying a washing machine. You know, some people are so, ah, so poor that if they see that you have a washing machine, they will, they, will, they will cost you. What are you doing with a washing machine? What happened to your hand? Uh, you are lazy. You are, no. You are investing in utility so that you can do this, achieve this in a faster rate, burn less energy and use your energy for something more meaningful. Spend less time on mundane tasks. You are getting somebody to cook for you or to do this for you or do that for you. You are paying somebody to do something for you. See it as an investment for you to be able to focus on something more meaningful for your life. Poor people spend, rich people invest in utility. What are you investing in and how are you investing differently? So it's nothing more that when we talk about investment, we are talking about crypto or stock or what. No, investments are diverse. Number two, sweat money is not meant to be spent. Do not spend your sweat money. Do not spend your salary. Salary comes to your account. Don't just to spend it immediately. Some people, before the salary comes in, they finished it. At this point of your life, the money that you are making, that you are working and sweating for, that you know, ah, this one I worked for, this one, he paid me, this money that is coming in, ah, that money that if it comes in, you, ah, finally, salary has come. Ah, that money that you wait for before it comes, that money that you know you went through thick, thick and thin, Abby, to get, is not meant to be spent. It's meant to be passed in, into a multiplication system. It is meant to be passed into a leverage system. So the money comes in, a part of the money should be reserved. A small portion of it you can save. Fine. You can save a small portion. Then... A part of that money should be going into leveraged trade. Leverage. What can I use this to do? Can I use it to advertise my business? So some of you, you sell something, but you never advertised it. You sell perfume oils, you've never advertised it. You sell human hair, you make hair, you weave, you do this or that, you sew clothes, but your salary comes in and then you, you just spend the salary like that. You use it and buy this, buy that, buy Zubo, Fura, the Nunu, and you got and drink them together buy cake oh this was say uh, selling earrings you buy this was say, this buy but you just enter a buying compulsive buying mode once your salary comes into your mind and by the time it finishes you return to ground ground zero square one 
That's not how it's meant to be. You are meant to be thinking in a different way. Now, this money is coming in. How can I optimize this? How can I multiply this? What is the most predictable way I can make more money from this money that is coming in? So can I buy something and sell? So let's say they pay you 100,000. You keep 20 for to save. Random miscellaneous saving. Now, the 80, you decide that this 80, I'm going to use it for something that is predictable. If you are starting out, you are still starting, you can start small, small. You can test the market small, small. Instead, you save 80, use 20 for something productive. Use it to advertise your business, use it to buy more products and sell and all that. And but then you realize that this thing is working. People are buying this. People are getting this. People need this. They are ordering. You now decide the more money comes into your, your account, money hardly sleeps with me in my account I, I mean i hardly have money sleeping idle i'm always thinking how can i multiply this fast how can i multiply? how can I, what can i get how can i i don't even sometimes i save my money in products because i know very soon that money in my bank is going to lose value and become almost useless but it's, if it's in a product as the money is going down in value my product is appreciating because things are even getting worse Thank you. Thank you, Christy. Thank you. So like the video if you're here too. You can like the video. Yes, like the video so that more people would be notified about this session, right? Now, please like the video if you're here. That's the only thing I want you to do for me. Like the video. Now, um, you know, I was talking about multiplying and sweat money and the rest of them. You have to be thinking, how can I leverage what is coming in? Okay, how can I leverage what is coming in? Your salary comes in. Maybe you've written a book. You can use that a part of the money to put towards publishing your book because you know that if you publish like 50 copies of this book, you can sell those books that you've published and you make more than three times the money that you used to publish it. So your salary is 200,000. They pay you, you remove 20 or 30 that you use for the month, especially if you're if you're not in Kubwa and you are working in Dubai. <laughs> because your transport every month will be like 50k, if I'm not mistaken. Uh -huh. But if you are maybe staying close to your workplace or something, you're not spending so much and you know how to cook by yourself, you know, you cook for yourself and all that. You have you have many ways to save money. So you hold, let's say, 50 for the month. The remaining use them go and publish your book. That book, you know it to sell. Meet your pastor and introduce the book to him. They can market it in church. They can talk about it in church. You have a, 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 a club. You can negotiate for a book club or something. Just anything. Just be creative and think of how you can multiply that money. Don't just let it sit idle. Okay? Let's go to the next one. Diversify your income streams. Diversify your income streams. Invest in multiple trades. Even the Bible says so. I think there's um, a, is it Ecclesiastes eight eleven or Ecclesiastes eleven eight? Seems like eight eleven. Ah? Okay, sorry, Ecclesiastes eleven two. Invest in. Invest in seven. Or or ah, I've, trade. In fact, I don't know how it is how they put it exactly, but it's more like. Invest in diverse trades, diversify your income so that when one goes bad, another one can stand in for that one that is bad. Even God is giving us raw strategies. Diversify your income streams. It's not bad to start with one that you can manage and manage it. And as you are coming up, you are not adding more. It's not also bad to start with many that you feel you can manage. And then as you go up, you streamline. It's not also bad to manage, you know, to start with many. As you as you go up, the menu will begin to multiply. As long as it is something you can handle, that's fine. Okay, no bias here. That's fine. Now, diversify your income stream. All the things that you are doing now, there are opportunities to make money in everything you are doing. And anything you are doing right now, whether you're a singer or a, a musician, a singer, musician, all of them, anything you are doing, anything, even your position that you're occupying in church, there are many ways you can monetize them, even outside church. Many ways. You play instruments, you can start teaching people. 
private lessons on how to play instruments. You sing, you can become a vocal coach and start helping people guidelines and tips on how to make their voices better. So things like that, so many things you can do, so many things. Open your mind to opportunities and ideas that can make you wealthy. Diversify, very important, diversify. Number four, or oh, I don't know the number, four or five. Love, hey, it's fun, love just jump out from my mouth like this. Hey, shit, no be love, oh. leave, leave below your means. Don't try to impress anybody, don't live to impress anybody. Live below your means. You can go to, see, you can go to Kubwa Market on Sundays. Go there, you see where they sell clothes, fine clothes that you can pick for 2K, 1.5. Nobody's going to catch you on the road and ask you, what are you wearing? People don't even know. Nobody's going to catch you. If you know that your money you have is not enough to go to the boutique, don't, don't. Okay, my video paused for a while. I don't know why. So I was saying your salary cannot be hundred k, and you're wearing a wig of sixty k. The salary came immediately. You use sixty k, go and buy a wig. You use five k, buy earring. Seven k to fix eyelashes, fix nails with five k. Salary finished. Nothing. No. No proof of what that thing went into. Nothing. No evidence anywhere. Live below your means. The people you are trying to impress may, may eventually not be impressed. So it doesn't make sense. Now, <laughs> you don't have money. You're going to buy a shoe of 50K or 70K. Ah, ah, uh ah, -uh now. You self check them. You don't make sense. You buy the shoe and you are broke. You are working on an expensive shoe with empty pockets. People will not even know because those will still cover the shoe. I beg, it's not love. I think I don't know. Maybe it's my handwriting. It's my handwriting. The way I wrote the leaf here, so it all entered my eye. Sure, it's my. It's not love. I beg. It's not, it's not love. <laughs> love will touch it. I'll say the amen silently. Hmm? I'll say it. I'll not shout it. So, live below your means. Number five, sell something. Sell something. Find something to sell. Find something to, to, to you know, something that people need. Wherever you are, look around. Look around you. What do these people need? People in my compound, what do they need? People in my church, what do they need that I can sell? People in my school, what do they need that I can sell? My classmates, my flatmates, my whatever. What do they need that I can sell to them that I may be able to get at a cheaper rate and market to them? People in my community or my club, what do they need that I can sell to them? Find something that you can sell. Learn how to sell. It's, I mean, sales is one of the most important skills anybody's ever going to learn, no matter your field of practice, no matter your industry sales the ability to sell the ability to persuade people to buy your products is one of the most important things you are ever going to sell sales learning sales changed my life forever i mean it changed my life okay so find something to sell you 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 cannot call yourself financially intelligent if you're not able to sell whether you are selling a, a, a vision, you are selling a brand, you are selling a message, you are selling an idea, you are selling a product or selling a business, whatever the case may be, you need to know how to sell. Hmm. Hey. Okay. So, good. The last one, but not the least. Buying ball. There are so many other tips. So many other tips. So many others. But I'll end with this one. Buy in bulk. Do bulk buying. 
do bulk buying. So now, if you want to buy soap, and you start to buy one bar soap, one bar of soap, hmm? and that bar of soap is like 400 or 500, and you're buying it every week, every week to finish, when you go back to buy, they tell you it's 550. You buy one. The next, it finishes. You go back. You buy another one. They say, that, oh, it's now 700. Though. You go, you buy again. It's now 900. You keep buying. But do you know that if you had bought it the day you bought the first one, and they say, oh, that 500 for one, but if you are buying it in bulk, they will now, you buy six buy five get one free right so you bought five 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 hundred you got five hundred naira for free five hundred naira so for free so you've saved yourself stress and money for the next six weeks right so any other thing that you want food stuff what have you anything that you're thinking about fuel you know, some people, when they want to buy fuel, they go and buy one liter. One liter of fuel. Before we finish, they will carry their money again, take another bike. So you are, and, and some, some will even buy black market. So you take bike of 400 and go and buy one liter of fuel for 670 or 680. And come back with 400. <laughs> so, you come back with 400. The one liter you bought to finish the next day, here we go again. You go, come back. That means you should have just gone once and saved yourself multiple for 400 naira, unnecessary 400 naira. By the time you calculate it like two or three or four days, you find out that you would have even bought more for and stayed at home enjoying yourself. Bulk buying helps you buy food stuff in bulk. Buy perishable and non-perishable products in bulk as long as you have a good storage system. If you cannot afford it by yourself, if you cannot fund the whole thing you want to buy by yourself, you can find a group of friends, a group of church people, brethren, you know, oh, I think, you know, we can buy rice, so we can put money together and buy a bag of rice and we share it instead of everybody buying modu by modu, you know. Let's put money together, buy a full chicken, Kill it, share it. You know, let's do this. You you do all those things communally. When we talk about the, the the acts of the apostles, about how they came together and did things together, and you know, they they sold their properties and came to surrender to the apostles' feet so that they can distribute according to as each had need. Let me tell you the truth. In today's day and age, it will most likely look this way. The apostles, this time around, the disciples, the believers, coming together, sharing ideas, because knowledge is a currency, sharing opportunities, sharing networks, sharing knowledge, sharing things like this, you know, coming together to buy stuff in bulk, coming to collaborate, to partner, to do something good or something huge or something phenomenal okay so let's put money together let's buy plantain you you want this you want plantain you want plantain let's do this together so that's the communal living not necessarily that you must go and sell your your shoe your new lakers you go and sell it you go and sell your phone so that you can come and distribute how many people are doing that today <laughs> you know but this is the day and age that we've met and nothing stops us from actually helping ourselves if we want to. So, bulk buying is important. You can buy in bulk for yourself. You can buy for other people. I mean, with other people, you know, things like detergent, onions, all these petty petty things. You can just buy them a lot and and keep. The price will eventually change, and it's not going to come down. The price of detergent. No matter how, if dollar increases in price, detergent price will increase. You don't notice all those things because if not, you are not taking notes. Detergent that I used to buy for like 80 naira before is now 200. I went there, no complaint. It gave me, I collected the detergent and I went to 
the one of 400 the one that used to be 400 500 before is now like 1200 or 1000 you will not complain there's nothing you can do you will not beat anybody you will not fight so if you can buy in bulk go ahead and buy in bulk so that's that's it that's it i hope this session has inspired you to take action i hope it has opened your eyes as well to opportunities that are within and around you i want to assure you that there's a lot of value that you have that can be monetized there's a lot in you within you that you can make wealth from you can make a lot of profit from sometimes what is holding you from that wealth that you want to experience is the quality of knowledge that you have at this current level so no matter what don't be discouraged keep digging keep fighting keep digging but you see this money you see wealth you must make it you must make how will every other person be helped how would the world be helped how would that dream come to real i mean come to fruition how would that vision come to life if there are no resources to birth them into existence so my dear friends and families <laughs> i i i really hope that this has been a great one for you so thank you very much for having me thank you very much i know we stretched i know we stretched but um i'm glad and uh bio a bio me thank you for initiating this uh, hey i don't even know if i pronounced i should have just stopped at bio i don't know if i pronounced the name correctly <laughs> thank you sir you did well Yes, we are really blessed tonight. Thank you. At least Thank half, you. Half, we have learned a lot, uh, building capacity, uh, have a long time goal that you work with. And also, even in the scripture, there's a part in uh, Zechariah 1, verse 17. That says it's true finance that the kingdom of God will be spread. This good news will be spread abroad. True. True prosperity, my faith will spread abroad. True. Thank you for sharing. And we believe we'll have more of this with time and trusting God that before the end of this year, we'll have a leap and a shift in our financial status. Thank you so very much. We really appreciate it you're welcome you're welcome thank you sir so um i don't know if anybody has a question i can take one or two i can take one or two yes thank you so much oh thank you thank you madam love it <laughs> thank you love it I, I appreciate you thank you very much and um thank you anvil anvil for this opportunity so for those who don't know my my church this is the 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 singles forum the singles platform for my 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 church the anvil group so i i'm glad that <laughs> thank you emmanuel thank you emmanuel so i'm glad that i'm doing this for for anvil i mean i'm glad that i'm, I'm being a part of this and uh, it's been an amazing time and for those of you who are joining from anvil i would love to meet you so when we see in church next sunday this this Sunday, just come and say hi. If you mistakenly see me, you can come and say hi. I want us to, you know, to 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 grow together, right? I want us to interact more often and have fun learning and growing together. So thank you all for this privilege, this amazing, this awesome privilege to deliver this session to you. Okay. And I, I trust God. It's going to it's going to kick it's going to kickstart something big. It's going to kickstart something huge in our lives, something tremendous. You know, you, even if you've not started before, you can start today. You can you can you, oh beautiful. I'm, this is exactly what I wanted to see. This is exactly what I wanted to see. I can create wealth. I'm capable of doing that with capacity building. Ah, this is beautiful. Thank you, Engineer Elisha. Thank you, Engineer. So this is. This is what, in fact, I want us to make this 
make this affirmation and be ready to work. I want us to make this affirmation. You know, I can create wealth. I am capable of doing that with capacity building. The more you build your capacity, the more likely it is that you are able to create something, that you are able to create wealth. So have a creator mentality. Have a creator mentality. Do not believe the, that the lies of the devil. Don't believe the lies of society that for you to make money, you have to work from nine o'clock to five o'clock, work out your eyeballs, you come back home tired and frustrated. Your boss is annoying you, your colleagues are, you know, when you see, the blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. So there's no way you will be living a life of pain and misery and any small salary. And you think that that job, that is the blessing of the Lord, that is not God's will for you. It's not that you will not go through pain, but there's a difference between the pain that is planned, the pain that is anticipated, the pain of growth, and unnecessary pain that is just, just there. Just there to frustrate you. The system is just there to get you angry, underpay you, overuse you, stretch you, burn you out, wear you out, tear you into pieces, and then leave you with little or no reward. That is not God's will for our lives. I can promise you that. So I am that's what I'm going to leave us with. Okay. That's what I'm going to leave us with. Um I didn't see any questions, so I'll just assume that, you know, maybe we are keeping the questions for the Anvils group chat <laughs> or, or somewhere else. Or maybe you are keeping the question for me when you see me in church, you know, corner me sharply. No, voila, I will still answer. So thank you all for this. Um, you, you can do well to share this video with your, you know, share the video with your friends, share the video with your colleagues. Share the video with your family members, anybody you think, okay, this guy, I mean, you can just tell them that, look, you joined this, it's really amazing. You joined and it was fantastic. You learned so much. You think they should watch the video too. So you can share it with them, share it, you know, with your friends in church or something, or your your cell group, your, what is it, your care group, you can share with them. Oh, we really discussed a lot here and I think everybody should hear this. This is a very important message for the time. We talked about financial intelligence and capacity building, and I think you should see it. You share with them, okay? So, yes, that's that's all for tonight. That's all for tonight. Thank you very much for joining, Christy, Engineer Elisha, Casey Loveth. Thank you very much for joining. So, um, I'm going to leave my my number here just in case anybody wants to reach out to me. This is my, this is my number, that's 70115. So this is my WhatsApp number. So if you want to reach out to me, you can just use this number and uh, send me a WhatsApp message, okay? You can send a WhatsApp message via this line and I'll surely, <laughs> okay, I'll try to respond, <laughs> uh, but, but, as long as you're sending it this night, I'll see it and I'll respond. Yeah, I'll see it this night. So have an amazing day, you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Not an amazing day now, but amazing night. So have a wonderful night rest. Bye. Bye, sir. Bye, all. Thank you very much for, for, hosting, for hosting us and anchoring this meeting. We, we appreciate you. Wow. <laughs> We appreciate so, you all. So bye. Bye, everybody. Let's meet in the Anvil's Anvil group chat. Bye. Bye.
And those that are those that are still here, please don't forget to share your your feedback, your experience on the Anview Group chat. Yes, I, I just remembered. Don't forget to share your experience so that when next we're organizing things like this, people will be more motivated to to join. Us. I would really, really appreciate that. And um, also to the extent of it, I would love to connect with you all. Okay. Bye. Thank you.